In this video session, the discussion is going to be about the break keyword and the continue statement or the keyword. There are a number of occasions when we need to come out of a loop when certain results are achieved or we need to exit the loop after a fixed number of iterations or looping statements. Now, break what it does is it causes the control to be transferred out of the block of instructions being executed by the while for or do while loop. So the best way to understand the working of a break statement is through a simple example. Let us say I have got a loop. Okay, this is a loop which is executing let's say endlessly. In this loop what I am doing is given I am reading a number I am doubling every number which is entered and printing it on the screen. I will keep doing this endlessly but the minute a user enters zero I am going to come out of that particular loop. So what I am doing is here in the body of the loop at the top I am reading a number. This is an infinite loop. So if the number is equal to zero straight away I am exiting the loop and I am coming at this particular point. If the number is a non-zero number, I am taking the number and multiplying it by 2. So if I have to take a look at the code which helps me achieve this particular task of doubling a non-zero number, this is how it is going to look. So here what I have done is I have defined a variable called as number. Here I have used a while one indicating that anything between this red block is a number of statements which are going to be executed endlessly if I am not going to enter zero. So the first thing is I do is I read a number. Assume let me say I enter the number 10. Is 10 equal to zero? This condition is false. So it will print 10 into 2 is 20. Now it will again go back here. This process will keep happening again and again till I keep entering the value or till I go ahead and enter the value 0. Let us say after the 10th or 20th time I enter 0 into number. Now 0 is equal to 0 the boolean condition or the boolean expression happens to be true. Since this is true it will encounter this break statement. The minute it encounters the break statement the control will come after this flower bracket. So this is what is the job of a break. It will break out of this particular loop block of statements and come here. So I hope you are clear about how the break statement works in C. Now let's take a look at another control statement which is called as the continue statement which is used along with the control flow statements like while, do while and for. So the best way to take a look at is through an example. Let's say I am trying to write a small program where I am trying to find the sum of positive numbers only. If the number happens to be negative I am not adding it to the sum. So here I am interested to find the sum of just say let's on, let's say only 10 input numbers by the user. I have declared a variable i as 0. This is the variable which is going to read the number from the user. This is the variable which is going to store the sum. So here I have fixed up that I am only going to read 10 numbers. So I am asking the user enter 10 numbers. So for i is equal to 0, i less than 10, I am reading the first number. So if the number is not equal to 0 or less than 0, I am taking sum and adding sum to number. So this particular process will keep continuing as long as 10 numbers are entered. Okay, But one thing you need to understand here, suppose I enter minus 2. If I enter minus 2, this condition becomes true. Once it hits this continue, okay, it will not come to it will not execute the else part actually the else part is not really required here I think I can tell you explain to you without the else part okay let's take this else part off so once it encounters the continue it will directly go back to this particular increment so let me explain to you with a series of data samples once the number is 1 okay number is 1 1 is less than or equal to 0 this condition is false so sum is now 0 plus 1, sum is 1, okay. Then it reads the next number is minus 2. 
Now, number minus 2 is less than or equal to 0 is true. So, because it hits the continuous statement, it will not execute this sum statement. It will go and increase i by 1. Next number is 3. Since sum number is 3, 3 is not less than or equal to 0. So, this condition is false. It will come here. Sum was 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So, sum is now equal to 4. I go back here. I read the next number. Number happens to be 4. So, 4 is less than or equal to 0 is false. So, it will come here. Sum was 4. 4 plus 4 now is 8. So, what this happens is this will keep reading all the numbers but it will see that negative and 0 are not added to the sum. That is achieved by the means of this continue statement. So, wherever the continue statement is encountered based on a condition like this when the condition becomes true anything after the continue statement will not get executed and the control will directly go here. So, this is the job of a continue statement. Suppose I had put the continue without if I had put the continue statement without the if the sum would have always been 0 because the continue would have got executed for all the 10 times and this statement sum is equal to sum plus number would never have got executed. So, this is the job of a continue statement. In simple words when a continue keyword is encountered, any instructions after the continue are not executed and the control goes to the data point or the point where the checking of the condition happens.